Hello there. In this video, I'm joined by Michael from Cole Palmer. And Michael, you're going to be talking about gear pumps. Yeah. Okay. So firstly, we uh, we concentrate on the smaller magnetically coupled gear pumps. I've got the, a pump head in front of me, and if I just turn it upside down, mm -hmm. you can see that rather than having a slot where you can attach a drive to it, there's actually just a magnet. So the drives that control these would have another magnet and would spin quickly and in doing so spin the magnet inside here. Right. So they're not directly coupled to the drive. What's good about a, a gear pump? Um, they can achieve a low flow rates while maintaining relatively high pressures. Um, they give you a pulseless flow and have a relatively high accuracy. They are the dominant pump choice for hydraulic devices such as elevators and dampener controls. Alrighty. So how do they work? Yeah. So as you can see, there are two gears rotating. So one of the gears itself is connected to your drive. So it's, it's, one of them is turning. We call that the, the driving gear. Okay. The other one is driven by the driving gear. So that one just moves as this one does. Okay, as a okay. result of the other yes, one as driving a result of the, the other one. That's correct. And as they do, they take a packet of liquid between each gear yeah. and the gear valley. Okay. okay, on both sides. On both sides. Yeah. So as they rotate, the liquid moves all the way around and comes out this way. Mm -hmm. The gears obviously mesh at this point and stop liquid moving backwards. So I've actually opened up uh, one of the gear pump heads here for you to see. Yeah. So you can see the gears themselves are quite tiny. Oh yes. So they only take a very small packet of liquid at a time. Okay. And rotate relatively fast. So you want these moving at say at least 100 RPM, but they can rotate up to 5,000, 6,000 RPM. So the idea is yes, small packets of liquid, but very, very fast to generate your flow rates. Okay. Is there anything else that the, the gear system will, will do in the pump? Yeah, it's important to realize that the, the liquid itself that is being pumped mm. lubricates the gears, lubricates the surface of the gears. Um, this is especially important as obviously we mentioned that the gears run quite quickly. Um, so without this lubrication, they can actually get very hot and burn up and you end up needing to replace your gears, unfortunately. So these pumps, we say we cannot run them dry. Okay, if, would these packets of liquid not generate a pulsed flow? Uh, in theory, yes, they do generate a pulsed flow because they are, you, ultimately you are taking packets of liquid and moving them along. Mm. However, as we mentioned before, the packets are very tiny and there are lots of them. So they're going very fast, very tiny packets. So the end result is virtually a smooth flow. So can this pump handle particulates? Well, unfortunately, you know, these, these kind of cavities are very small. Mm. So for a start, there's not much they can actually fit through there. So they can't handle particulates going through the gears. Secondly, particulates could get caught up, especially at the mesh point and damage your gears. So unfortunately, no particulates for this particular pump. Um, so we have had customers to stop particulates going through to the pump, mm. put a filter at the inlet. Right. So great, you block all your particulates getting through yeah. and you get your liquid just moving. Um, however, what can happen and what has happened to some of, well, one customer in particular over and over again, was that they would uh, forget to replace their filters after periods of time. Mm. So your filters over a period of time will eventually start getting blocked. Yeah, up. clogged. Yeah, and what you're doing is restricting the flow at your inlet. So the pump itself tries to suck your liquid through, but it's not getting enough. So it generates a, a high kind of uh, vacuums on these levels and it can actually vaporize your liquid. So if you've just got water, for example, you're not sucking enough, it vaporizes your water to create bubbles. Right. And these bubbles can be very problematic when they come back around because as they come back around, they start to compress and they generate a tiny explosion and that can rip pieces out of your, your gears. So the gears are generally made out of plastic. Right. Um, so this is known as cavitation. Um, and yeah, we, we, we have seen it unfortunately several times. Now, if, if this does happen, you can replace the gears. However, they're usually about a third to half the price of a new gear pump head 
as it is. So what other applications is a gear pump useful for, Michael? So anything that requires a pulseless flow um, and possibly with high back pressures. So um, one classic example would be um, ink to a commercial um, ink head. So these will supply them at a nice constant flow rate. And if your back pressure ends up changing, they will still give you a relatively um, accurate uh, range. Um, one thing to, to note with these as well is they actually work uh, very well with the slightly higher viscosity liquids, so your oils. Um, they actually are more efficient with them because what's, what can happen with lower viscosities is that your liquid can leak backwards as these are running, only slightly. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so yeah, so, we're, uh, so water they're fine with and oil's even better. Um, what you may want to, uh, con what may be a consideration is if you're using something like a solvent with a lower viscosity than water, you might consider a different technology because as I say, they can start leaking backwards and when you start applying back pressure to them, the flow range can change slightly. Okay. Okay. All right. And to summarize? So um, just to summarize those um, kind of key parts of the gear pump, we have the gear valley, that's the, the piece in between the gears. Yeah. And we have the driving gear, the driven gear, and the mesh point where they come together. Right. Okay. And to summarize gear pumps? So just to summarize, so strengths, long working life, high accuracy, large turn down ratio, you can have them moving quite slowly and very, very fast indeed. Um, so limitations, um, as we've mentioned before, critical suction conditions, you don't want to let them run dry. Mm. Um, so they, uh, no running dry. Um, one thing we, we, we kind of didn't mention was potential back siphoning. Yeah. When you're trying to do a dose, mm -hmm. so you're trying to say, right, I want to do, say, one litre and then stop. Uh, with these pumps, when you stop them, liquid can move either way. Right. Okay. That's not a problem. You just put a check valve on the end to make sure that when you do stop, nothing goes back or forth. Okay. You've got a solution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and applications? Uh, so as mentioned before, accurate for long meterings, um, metering times, and ideally they, they you can provide relatively high pressures at the lower flow ranges. Great, so that's Thank Michael you. from Cole Palmer talking about gear pumps. If you've got any more questions about them, please do get in touch with the team.